Hello Tech World, this is Tech Thoughts. In this video, I'll be showing you how to create a new Hyper-V VM via the GUI, as well as PowerShell. As always, if you prefer written tech info, the corresponding article for this video can be found on the Tech Thoughts blog by clicking here, or by referencing the comments below. Let's go ahead and get started. So what I have here is a new Hyper-V server. Uh, no virtual machines yet provisioned on this particular hype. And what we can do is we can approach creating a new VM via the, the wizard in the Hyper-V manager, or we can create it via PowerShell. And I'll show you just how easy it is to create a new VM via PowerShell. We just use the new VM command, give that VM a name, we'll call it test VM, and we click enter. And it's literally that simple. Uh, we have a new VM created inside Hyper-V Manager. The problem is though, is that all of that was very simple and quick. It created this with all of the default values and didn't provision a hard drive for this particular VM. So we got 512 megabytes uh, as our RAM setting, no hard drive provision, one network adapter, and nothing else is set on this particular VM. So all that was really rapid and, and very quick, um, not very usable right out of the box. In order to get a more usable VM, we'll need to specify some settings. And to do that, we'll have to get a little bit more granular with the script. Now this may look a little daunting on the left here at first, but I'll be demoing the GUI here now, and we'll reference this script uh, as we go through the GUI and you'll see that what we're, all we're actually really doing is just specifying some of the parameters that we need in order to get this VM created the way we want. So let's use the GUI through the Hyper-V Manager. If you're not sure how to launch that, I'll go ahead and demo that you can just come here, vertmgmt.msc, which will open up the Hyper-V Manager. So I'll go ahead and create, or right click on my Hyper-V server, go to New and Virtual Machine. That's going to prompt the new virtual machine wizard. So the first thing we notice is that it's going to be asking us what we want to call the virtual machine. This is not the host name. This is just the name that this VM will have associated with it on the hype. So we can see over here and then in the script, we're doing some user creation questions. And all we're doing is loading some variables that say, what is the name of this VM into VM name? So we're doing the exact same thing in the script that is being accomplished inside the GUI. So we'll call this test VM. One, two, three. We'll also be given the opportunity to specify where this VM is going to be stored at. And what it means is the VM configuration files. There are a couple files associated with this VM config. I've got a short script over here on the left that's going to show you what I mean. So I'll just change this to test VM, which I've already created. And just note that uh, not only the path of the VM config XML files, but also the snapshot file location and the smart paging file are going to be stored those there as well. So just make sure that you're uh, storing everything appropriately on your on whatever storage you have provisioned for your Hyper-V server. Keep in mind this is not where the VHD is going to be stored. We'll be specifying that location here in just a moment. I'm going to go ahead and accept the default and click Next. Okay, so now it's going to be asking us what generation type we would like this VM to be. Uh, there is some complexity on this decision, and I recommend that you look at TechNet to see the differences between the two generations. But as a general rule of thumb, if you're running on the client side Windows 8 or higher, or if the VM is going to be running client Windows 8 or higher, or Windows Server 2012 or higher, you're generally going to select Generation 2. Any older operating system is most likely going to be Generation 1. Since I'm going to be creating a 2012 R2, I'm going to be selecting Generation 2 and clicking Next. In our script over here, we ask the user to specify a generation and load that into the generation variable. Now we'll get the opportunity to assign how much memory you want to provision for this VM and I'm gonna say 1024 on the side of the GUI. And we also get the option to choose dynamic memory. And what that's gonna allow the VM to do is expand and take on more memory assets if the hype has those available. So the memory can sh grow or shrink depending on the VM's usage. I'll go ahead and select use dynamic memory for this virtual machine. The GUI portion is really limited in this case as you can't specify memory minimum, memory maximum, and starting memory all here at once. You'll have to wait till the VM is created inside the GUI and then go back and change that via the VM settings. Whereas in the script, we'll be asking the user for all of those at the same time. So the user will be able to specify things like the, mem the memory minimum, whether it's dynamic memory or not, the memory maximum as well as the starting memory. And we'll go ahead and convert all of those to megabytes. And that's all that's happening in this portion of the script. So I'll go ahead and click Next. Here we'll be given an opportunity to configure the networking. You should have already created a virtual switch, and if you haven't, you can reference one of my other videos where I show you how that's done. But we'll associate this with the public V switch. That way that VM will be able to get outside connectivity. I've got that portion over here in my script, but it's a little farther down. So I'll go ahead and just move it up real quick and I'll show you what it's doing. So we'll put that after the memory. 
So what I'm doing here is I'm telling the script to list the available switches for the user. This will allow the user to see what available switches are just like we can in the GUI. And that way they can enter the correct vSwitch name and specify which vSwitch they would like to be associated with the new VM. Okay, and I'll go ahead and click next. Here we'll be given the opportunity to create the virtual disk, either the VHD or VHDX that we'll be associating with this new VM. By default, it stores it in the default location, which again is different from your VM configuration file most likely. And you'll get the opportunity to specify a size. Note that this is gonna by default create a dynamic disk for the operating system. So it's not gonna take up the full 127 gigs. However, I still feel that's a little bit big. So we're gonna be changing this down to 60, which is typically enough for most OS drives. I have that information in the script over here where the user can specify the path for the new VHD as well as specify how big that VHD will actually be. All right, and I'll go ahead and click next. On this screen, you'll get an opportunity to configure how you're going to load an operating system onto this new VM. You can choose to defer that action and, and deal with it later, or you can go ahead and mount a bootable image file or an ISO file to this OS. So if you have one already loaded on your Hyper-V server, like I've got the 2012 R2 with updates ISO here, I can go ahead and mount that and it'll change the boot order of this new VM so that the next time or the first time that I start it, it'll boot and reference that ISO file. Or if I want to pixie boot and install a operating system over the network, I can select that here as well. I'm going to go ahead and defer the operating system boot until a later time and click next. Now you'll be given the opportunity to review the new virtual machine and verify that all the settings are as desired. If you're satisfied with this, you can go ahead and click finish and that'll just provision a new VM. So this is our new test VM123, and if we right click it and go to settings, we notice that it has the same amount of memory that we provisioned. Since we didn't get the opportunity during the GUI to specify the amount of processors, it defaults to one, which we can change here if we wish. It did provision a hard drive for us in the location that we specified. And if we click the inspect button, we can see that it is provisioned for 60 gigs, but because it's a dynamic drive, it's currently set for four megabytes. It will grow as we load operating system and add data to that VHDX file. Our network adapter is associated with a public vSwitch like we created. And if we look at the boot order right now, we're currently set to boot off the network adapter. So this machine will attempt to pixie boot as a first attempt if we were to start this VM now. If I did still want to load an ISO onto this, I would need to add a DVD drive. So we'll add hardware, SCSI controller, and we'll add a DVD drive. Now that I have an, a DVD drive provision for this VM, I can go ahead and mount an ISO file for Windows to load off of an ISO file. I'll click Open, and I'll click Apply. With that now applied, I can change the boot order to DVD drive by moving this up. And now the first time that I start my new VM, it'll boot off that DVD drive with the ISO file that I specified. I'll go ahead and click OK. And if I were to right click and start this VM, I would begin the Windows installation process. So that's how to create a new Hyper-V VM via the GUI using the new Virtual Machine Wizard. Now I'll be demoing the PowerShell script. Again, this entire portion here was end user questions so that the user could specify all the different settings that we would like to see inside of our new VM. Just to reiterate, we have the name of the VM, the generation type. We're gonna be doing some memory calculations, converting things to megabytes, but allowing the user to specify things like whether that memory will be dynamic, what the minimum memory, maximum memory, and starting memory will be. We'll also allow the user to view the available switches and make an intelligent decision about which VM switch to associate with the new VM. Specify the number of CPUs, which is something that we could not do inside the GUI. And we'll also enter paths of where we want things to be stored, as well as how big our VHD file is going to be. So this entire section is just for information gathering only. So really this is only one line, new VM, with all the variables that we previously collected. In this section right here, we'll just be asking the user to review the settings they previously specified. And if they type in yes, that they're uh, confident that that's going to create exactly what they need, we'll go ahead and kick off the new VM command. Some of the settings cannot be changed during the actual creation process. So what we'll actually do is wait for that to finish with the start sleep for five seconds. And then we'll be doing some configuration changes to that newly created VM, including adding the new network adapter, as well as setting the processor count, and also configuring the memory as we previously specified. This last command will just give us an output of the newly created VM with all the options that we set so that we can verify that the new VM is configured appropriately. This script can be referenced on the Tech Thoughts blog in its entirety, and I'll go ahead and run it now. So the first thing the script does is prompt me for a VM name. 
and I'll type in PDC because I'm going to be creating a primary domain controller. And it's going to ask me a generation type. Since this is going to be a 2012 R2 domain controller, I'll type in generation type 2. It'll ask me if I'll be using dynamic memory, and I'll say yes. The minimum memory I'm going to allow this to have is 512 meg. The maximum is going to be 2 gigs. And the starting memory I'm going to put for 1 gig. So when my VM first starts up, it'll have 1 gig. It could go down to 512 depending on use. And again, depending on use, it could go up to a maximum of 2 gig. The script provided us with all the available VM switches. And since I only have one, I'll be specifying that here. And I'll give this two CPUs. I'll enter my appropriate path for my VM config files, as well as for my VHD files. And again, 60 gigs is usually sufficient for a OS drive. And this script is going to be providing us with an overview of our settings. So we're going to be creating a new VM called PDC. The generation type is going to be 2, with starting memory of 512 RAM inside bytes, stored at the, the location that I specified, the VHDX file stored here, and the size of the VHDX is going to be about 60 gigs listed in bytes. And if I'm okay with that, I'll say yes, and the script will go ahead and provision that VM for me. When complete, we get a readout saying that we created a VM called PDC, it's currently off, generation type is 2, with two processors, one gig of startup RAM, could go down to 512, could go all the way up to 2 gig, and located in VVM PDC, and currently operating normally. So if I come over to my Hyper-V manager, I do see that my PDC is set here with all the settings as appropriate. I hope you found this video on creating a new Hyper-V VM to be helpful, and don't forget to check out the corresponding article on techthoughts.info.